My name is Dr. Joel Kirsch. I'm a pediatric cardiologist at the Hospital for Sick Children. My area of uh, professional interest relates to heart rhythm disorders. So SADS is an acronym, and acronyms are very popular in the medical field. It stands for Sudden Arrhythmia Death Syndromes, and includes a variety of disorders that we're learning more and more about every day that are sometimes responsible for sudden death. SADS conditions refer to a group of diseases that interfere with either the electrical or muscle systems of the heart. This causes abnormal heart activity. Even though the conditions have always existed, they didn't have the term SADS to describe them until recently. This has made awareness of the shared warning signs dangerously low. The SADS conditions seem to be characterized by an increased incidence of warning signs such as fainting during exertion, fainting during excitement or agitation, or a family history of those sorts of faints or sudden death. Michaela Ahern was a competitive figure skater and in university when she recognized that something was not right. I started to feel what I was calling palpitations um, and I went to the doctors and ended up in the emergency room a few times complaining of what I thought was a pounding heart that didn't feel normal, but I was told that it was. When I went to university, it continued, and it was really frightening because they started to last for longer and longer periods of time. And January is when it lasted for six hours. Um, it started in the morning in class, and it felt like someone was pounding on the inside of my rib cage, and it, like it was skipping beats. Um, so I was too embarrassed to go to the emergency room because I had already been there and they said it was normal. Despite being told it was just stress, Michaela persisted in getting the attention she needed. I went home um, two weeks later, around there, for reading week on Friday night, and I went, I had a seizure at home. Um, and then that's when I was readmitted, and at that point they said that I wasn't going to go home until I had an ICD put in. Because fainting is so common, the warning signs for SADS can easily be missed. But any time a young person faints during exercise or excitement, they should have a cardiac assessment to avoid the worst case scenario. Stephen was a, a third year history student at Queen's and he was doing the final semester of his third year at their campus in the south of England. It was a beautiful spring day in April 2002 and he, he went out for a run to get away from the books and told his girlfriend Avery and their other friends that he'd be back uh, by dinner time. He collapsed and by the time uh, some motorists passed him on this country road, it was too late, he had died. We learned afterward, his girlfriend told us, that he had fainted when he was running a couple of times before. It's very difficult to describe your child to the world. As a parent, you're very proud of them. You want other people to see them, meet them, um, experience them, and Stephen was he was a loving son, he was bright, he was witty, he, he was very, very funny, and um, that's the hard part. I have to tell people what he was like, instead of people knowing. It's incredible. I think it's one of the you may recognize Dr. Greg Wells from his work explaining issues affecting elite athletes during the Vancouver Olympics. He's familiar with SADS because of all the high-profile deaths that have happened in athletes, and he wants to get the word out that this affects people all across the board. We're at a point now where society is becoming aware of sudden arrhythmia death syndrome. Unfortunately, it's happened because there's been a number of high-profile cases in the media. People might think that it's mostly a problem that athletes have, but the reality is that the athletes are the ones who are in the news. Fainting during exercise isn't normal. Dizziness during exercise isn't normal. We push ourselves really, really hard when we're involved in sport, and there are moments where you might uh, feel some extreme discomfort, and, that, and that, those sorts of things are normal, but fainting and dizziness are not. Those are the sorts of things that we need to recognize as being warning signs for sudden arrhythmia death syndrome. Those are what 
this warning signs that need to be taken to a physician. Those are the warning signs that need to be taken seriously so that we can make sure that if there is an underlying problem, it is diagnosed properly and the young person who's involved in physical activity can return to participation safely. Because awareness around SADS conditions is currently low, the warning signs can be mistaken for other illnesses, leading to tragic outcomes. Jessica was, she was amazing. She was a pain in the ass. She was full of life. She loved people. She loved children. That's, if I heard it a hundred times at a funeral, I heard it a thousand times. That was, Jessica was always there for me. Jessica took care of me. She listened to me. For six years, we were outpatients at, at our children's hospital. Um, many, many visits, um, many, many phone calls and messages to neurologists, to cardiologists with Jessica. Um, but the last time we were, were there was about, um, I guess about six, seven months before she passed away and he turned to Jessica and he said, you need to go home and learn how to breathe through this. And he turned to me and he said, and don't waste your money on an ambulance. Every time your daughter has an episode. I was very fortunate. My last words were I love you. Families that have had these devastating losses are speaking out to increase awareness that can save lives and spare others of the agony of losing a child. Because these are inherited conditions, the lives you save by knowing about this are very likely to be in your own family. So these conditions, because they're genetic, they don't just affect you, the patient, but it has an implications for the rest of your family. You share half of your genes with your siblings, your parents, your children. So they each have a 50% chance of also having this genetic risk factor. You know, it's a, it's a hard thing to go through, but uh, when someone's diagnosed, whether it's because they've had symptoms or because there's been a tragedy in the family where someone has died unexpectedly, we say that the, the good that can come out of, of a diagnosis is that it can save someone else's life in the family. So as painful as it is to have that loss of health, that loss of life, if you can save another person's life, then it's all worth it. The good news is that SADS conditions are treatable and manageable to live with. Donata Lewenberger was diagnosed when she was 10. Her son Simon was diagnosed when he was 5. So Simon has to take his medication three times a day, 6.30 in the morning with breakfast, and 3 o'clock in the afternoon, which he's just demonstrated, and 10 o'clock at night. And he, it is advised that he doesn't take it with dairy products. And um, that's as simple as treating his heart condition as it is. Those are my curling battles, which I have a lot of. And I have a few from our club, because I was at a tournament in the club that I play in. And they also monitor there their for... activity level, and Simon has regular checkups to monitor his heart. Other than that, they live normal, productive lives, and they encourage other parents to pursue testing if they see the warning signs. I would recommend that they check with their family doctor, get recommended into Children's Hospital, have the simple ECG test done, which is a five-minute test. It's non-invasive, not painful at all, and uh, just have it done and see what see what the outcome is. And it's a very simple test. And you know, if your child just has to take medication, or there's other children that have arrhythmia problems that have defibrillators and such, and if that's all it is to have your child around for life, it's definitely worth it. It's important that parents, coaches, teachers people who are aware of a warning sign having occurred get that young person referred to a physician, preferably a specialist with familiarity with these conditions. It's a treatable disease. It's treatable. $14 a month medication at the, at the best case scenario and ECG, ICD for worst case. My message to other parents is if you think your child has these symptoms, don't second guess it go and get tested. You can live more than a normal life. You can, you can live a, 
a beautiful life, I think. Um, it's, it's an experience that it, it doesn't limit you in any way as a person in what you do or who you are. Um, if anything, it just protects you so that you can continue to live in the way that you want to.